then he brings us back into things that really matter. And the most important thing to God, our knowledge is irrelevant, our experiences are irrelevant. The most important thing to God is faith. Amen. Without our faith, no relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. Your faith. And this is the reason why the devil would do anything, anything to make sure that your faith is not built up, is not, is not developed. You see, sometimes the calendar, your calendar is full and you just have 24 hours in a day. So sometimes our fellowship with God is squeezed up somewhere there in between the tight schedule, correct? Am I right? At the end of the day, this is what I said to myself, at the end of the day, all the things you, you thought you would want to do, who is going to give you the strength to do them anyway? And by the time, in fact, you don't even finish them most times. And when you finish them, they don't even satisfy you. Praise God. The devil hates it when you stand up in faith. One thing that the devil will never or cannot he that he feels threatened by is when you open that book and you say you want a fellowship with God. Because he knows that when you read that book, your faith is going to rise. And when your faith rises, he has no more control over you. Amen? Praise God. So we are going to make a decision to win. And winning is your nature. We are winners in Christ. Praise God. I just want to, if you look at the bulletin here, we say a package deal. I don't really enjoy shopping. My sweetheart enjoys shopping more than I do. I'm the type that before I buy something, I make sure it's in the store, and then sometimes I call ahead and to find out the price, and then I go there straight, pick it up, and get out. I, I'm not interested in walking around the whole store seeing. I don't even pay attention to what is there. But for those of us who enjoy shopping, God bless you. Keep shopping. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nothing wrong in shopping. Amen. You know, but some men don't like to shop. Some men do shop. Some ladies don't like to shop. Some ladies do shop. You know. But when something, the package is, is, a, is, a, is a deal. I mean, the package is good. The price is right. Sometimes, I mean, everybody would love it. If you know what I mean. There are things that God, like I said before, God does not serve us food on the plate. If you go to God's, if you, he invited you for dinner, you, he will not serve you food on the plate. He prepares a buffet and he expects you to eat as much as you want. Amen? amen. Come on, amen. amen. Hallelujah. That is why he says he shall satisfy you. He's not just going to give you one or two servants. He will satisfy you. Our God is a God who satisfies us. Amen? Amen. You know, there are lots of teachings out there saying, oh, well, maybe this is how much God wants for you. This is God's will for you. We know God's will is written down there in the Bible. He says, all that I have, I have given to you. All. All. And the Bible says that his wealth is inexhaustible. Am I correct? Yeah, you cannot, you cannot measure his wealth. Now, there are a few things that are two, three things that I like to focus on, but when Jesus Christ came into the world, he gave us, God in Christ gave us himself. Amen? When Jesus came into the world, God in Christ gave us himself. Giving us himself means he gave us all that he has as well. Praise God. So God is your God. Amen. Is our God. We have, when I say ownership, not to control him, but ownership as children to parents. Amen. You know that your children have ownership of you. There is a responsibility. There is a relationship. So there is an expectation they have of you. Am I correct? And then they make a demand on you because on us as parents because they have 
ownership of us. They expect that we as parents should do some things. My son doesn't ask for, you know, it comes to grab whatever he wants because his dad is. His, uh, as far as his dad is, in his mind, is his. Amen? They ask for, I want this, I want that. There, there is a sense of ownership where our children are when it comes to us as parents. And that is innate. It's inborn. It's the same way. There is a sense, there should be a sense of ownership where God is concerned. Now, one of the things that make us feel like we don't have that right is when the devil reminds us of our sin that we have committed in the past. So the feeling that God might not listen to you, or God does not, might not want you, or you might not be good enough, or you are not qualified for it, that feeling is a defeating feeling, is guilt consciousness, is sin consciousness. God doesn't want us to have guilt consciousness, God wants us to have a righteousness consciousness. Because he said, I am the Lord who forgave your sin and I would remember what you did in the past. Praise God. Amen. Come on, praise God. Am I right? So there is no room. Anytime the devil brings your yesterday that is sketchy before you, just pull out his future in the name of Jesus. Tell the devil to get out of your and you tell him, devil, you are damned in the name of Jesus. And repeat the word of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? amen. Come on, amen. John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, for God so loved the world. Please, if you can write it down so that you, you can read it at home. John 3, 16 is a very popular scripture. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Amen? Yeah, amen? He says, whosoever. So in the beginning, when Jesus came, God gave himself to mankind. Mm -hmm. But with that, also, in that same package of salvation, is healing. Oh, yeah. Amen? And in that same package of healing is prosperity. Amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. Yes, it's prosperity. So in other words, in that package that of called Christ, where God wrapped himself in human form, he gave all that he is and all that he has unto man. He made a commitment, I want to be your father. And I want you to be my son. Praise God. In other words, he says, I am here to save you from your sin. I'm not interested in how you got into it. I'm not interested in how long you've been in it. I'm not interested in how, what, whatever you have done. It doesn't, I'm here to pull you out of it. And let's forget about what happened that led you into that. No, that, I'm not interested. I am here to forgive your sin if only you can believe me. And with that forgiveness of sin, I'm also here to heal you. Hallelujah. How do you get into, into the illness? It doesn't matter, but I'm here to heal you. It is free of charge. Amen. And not only that, I'm here to make sure that you prosper. Amen? Amen. It's three things in the, in the package. Eternal life, physical healing. Some Christians believe that when we're talking about physical healing, it's going to be when we get up to heaven. In heaven, you don't need to be healed. And you don't need to prosper in heaven. It's on this earth that we need the salvation. And we need the healing. And we need the prosperity. We don't need it up in heaven. Praise God. You can't be sick in heaven anyway. You don't need, there's no opposition in heaven. So you don't need any power in heaven. In heaven, we will be as, as free as, as, as children playing around, waking up all day, don't remember any bill to pay. Oh, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. But you see one thing. God wants us to live like that here on earth because 
heaven is here on earth. Let me, let me explain that. I'm going to explain that. When Jesus came, the, 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 he, he, when, before Jesus came, John the Baptist came, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Am I correct? And now when Jesus came, he said, repent for the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God is a dominion. It's an area where the dominion of the king covers. In other words, if I, you know, if I travel to Germany and I go to Canadian embassy there, within the area that the embassy is, I am in Canada. Amen. The law of Canada applies to me there. Though the physical geographical location is Germany, yet I am in Canada and Canada is in Germany. Amen. If you know what I mean. Amen. And if I go, I go, to, go over here to uh, Ottawa and I, go to, I want to go to Nigeria, I can visit Ottawa and I'll be Nigeria. Why? Because the embassy of Nigeria is there. When I get over there, the law of Nigeria applies to me. And the law of Canada stops at the entrance. Though I am within the territories of Canada. Now the earth that you and I live in, the kingdom of God is here on earth. And as long as you are in Christ, you are entitled to the privileges that are in the kingdom. Even when physically we are on earth. Praise the Lord. Come on, amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. I want us to know that the, there are some things that we don't need to ask for and we don't need to qualify for. You cannot earn. One of them is salvation. Number two is healing. Number three is prosperity. We do not need to pray for this. If you are in Christ, it is natural for it to happen. Can I make it? Can I? Can I? I, I we, am I making sense? Are you, am I talking to you? Okay, good. Your child born in your family does not need to ask for clothes, does he? It's the responsibility of the parents to clothe their child. It is the responsibility of the parents to set parameters, rules that will enhance a comfortable living for the child. Am I correct? Provide provision of food and whatever else, toys, things that make them happy, that, that stretches their imagination, that educate them, that helps them to develop. It's just natural instinct in a healthy parent to provide this for children. Now, the Bible says, God, Jesus said, if you be evil, in other words, human nature that is sinful, mm -hmm. can still provide good things for your children, how much more do you think my heavenly father would? Amen. Let's look at the scripture so that it doesn't look like I'm speaking from my head. All right? Now, these are things that we, we need to get into our system to know that, yes, I do not need to worry about my sins of yesterday. I don't need to worry about my health. I don't need to worry. Now, when we talk about worrying about health, let me say this. There are also laws, natural laws, that God expects us to follow. Amen? And when we don't follow the natural laws, because God set those natural laws, you know, if you stress yourself, you're going to fall sick. God does not want you to stress. That's why he says, be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious for anything. But in all things, with prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unto God and go to sleep. That's what he said. He said, the peace of God will guard your heart. Don't fret about anything. Don't worry about anything. Relax. Relax. Amen. Food. Is for the body. Why? Because you live in the body. And in the natural food, if you if you miss eat, how do you call it? If you eat wrong, you are breaking the natural law. Food is actually a means of giving the body fuel. And also that all the foods we eat it is a way to fix the body. The food we eat fix the body. To take care, to nurture the body. It's just like you take your car for servicing and then add this oil that they screw up that one, they tighten this one. That is how when you eat, all the things we eat 
helps to take care of our body. I'm doing a lot of reading on, you know, the foods and what it does to the body. You know, all kinds of foods. I'm doing quite a lot of research. Do you know why? Because I stressed myself out and I, I got sick. And then I had to go to the hospital. And then it woke me up. And that was when they said, oh, no, you have this, this is high, this is low, this is high, this is normal. I said, what are all those things? Then I had to sit down and I had to do my research. I said, oh, my goodness. You know how we, you eat some things and we say, oh, oh, this is, I just love that, and you eat it like there's no tomorrow. That could be an excess of, it. Let, let's not go there. <laughs> Praise God. So, natural laws must be obeyed. Sleeping, waking up, exercise, all these things are natural laws. Amen? Let's look at something here. In the book of Ephesians, uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Anybody there? Help me out. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I put it down on the bulletin there. So, if you're going to read it, help me out with anybody. Romans 1 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I'm there before you, then I read. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Uh-huh. Because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Did you, did you hear that? The gospel is the power of God through which he gives salvation to everyone who believes. Now let me say this. All the blessings I just mentioned, three of them, healing, prosperity, and salvation, is not given only to those who, are going to go, who go to church. It's given to the Muslim who is about to blow himself out right now. It's provided already. Healing is his right. It is your right. As Canadian citizen, there are some things that you have right to. You know what I'm saying? Now, in, as kingdom citizen, there are things that we have right to. One of them is healing. Another one is salvation. Praise God. Another one is the fatherhood of God. The fatherhood of God. I love that. The fatherhood of God. The fatherhood of God. Another one is prosperity. You know, because preachers have messed up, you know, with, with preachers who have taken, you know, sometimes human nature will take some things to the extreme and go to the extreme. Because preachers have you know, some have gone to the extreme. When you're talking about prosperity, it does not mean prosperity is bad. There was never a time that Jesus met anyone when he was here physically and made him poorer so that he can go to heaven. No. 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 And let me say something. There is a, what we call the, the oath of poverty. Oath for poverty. Yes, yeah, something they say, oath that you don't have to have earthly possessions. I think it's a Roman Catholic that established that law for the fathers, for the for their ministers. Oath of swear for and For the oath. priest. For the priest. Okay. Thank you. You say for the priest. Where you swear and go that you are everything you have belongs to the Vatican. Let me say something. The Vatican is one of the wealthiest organizations in the world. So even when they encourage people to swear that oath, they are making a lot of money. They do business, real business. And business is not the clean business all the time. I'm not here to say anything against any church, but you know what I'm saying? Yes. God is a king, not the pauper. You say, oh, but if you are wealthy, it might take your heart away from God. No, even, even poor people don't necessarily follow God. The Bible says, I wish above all things. That you prosper. I'm jumping the gun. Are you there? Say so. The one we just read says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. For, for what? For everyone that believes. Everyone that believes. Everyone. Christian, Muslim, Sikh, Hindu, whatever religion. It doesn't matter. Amen. For Jew and Gentile. Everyone that believes. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. He says, For by grace you are saved through faith. So salvation comes to us by grace through our faith. 
And that is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of your qualifications or works, lest so that no man can brag about it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. This is good. Let me give, let me give you just one more. Three, three from three. I'll give you one more and then. This is your nature. This is your nature. Okay? This is your nature. If you sit with a psychologist, a psychologist will tell you, well, this is your personality, so this is who you are. Am I correct? In the society, if you do some things, if you, you know, make some errors, they give you a level. The government will give you a level. The society gives you a level. They say, oh, this is who you are, this is what you have, this is what you are capable of doing. You know what I'm saying? Now, uh, there are some people that maybe some, some of the parts of the body did not develop quite well, you know, like the others. And then they will, they will level them as people who are deformed in this way or that way, and they put that level and they treat them that way. Now, look at your nature the way God sees you. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. This is how God sees you. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. This is how he sees you. When he looks at you, because you are in Christ, this is what he sees. Help me out here. God made Christ, who had no sin, <coughs> to be sin in my place, in my state, so that I, so that now I am the righteousness of God. Amen. Oh, you are the righteousness of God in Christ? After all you did? It's because he said, whatever you have done, I forgive you. As soon as somebody comes to Jesus Christ, the Bible says he's a brand new person. Corinthians 5, 17.